Hi everybody and welcome back to Critter Pulse. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Dr. Brian Moran. I'm your host for this. I'm very glad for all of the feedback so far. We're really looking forward to building this channel and making this a resource for you. Today I decided we're going to talk about congestive heart failure. This is the state when fluid is building up inside of the body and it is it is the end result of a heart disease process and i think that's the first and most important distinction to make here is that you hear the words congestive heart failure it's it's obviously very scary it's very concerning and it is a big deal but that isn't really a diagnosis in what's going wrong congestive heart failure is more of a syndrome that is an end result of some disease so congestive heart failure can be due to a number of diseases, congenital disease, acquired disease, potentially arrhythmias or abnormal heartbeats. Again, it sounds very scary to hear the words congestive heart failure, but the good news is prognosis is actually still pretty good. The bigger concern than just congestive heart failure is why did it happen? What is the underlying disease that led us to this state? With that, we're looking at either right-sided congestive heart failure or left-sided congestive heart failure. When we talk about right-sided congestive heart failure, that is when fluid is building up either in the belly, around the lungs, inside of the chest cavity, or potentially around the pericardium, which is the fibrous sac that is around the heart. When we're talking about left-sided congestive heart failure, we're talking about fluid actually building up inside of the lungs themselves. And I'm going to explain the pathology behind both of these. For this story, I'll, we'll talk about valve disease because it's extremely common. A lot of animals have it, both large and small. When we're looking at valve disease, what happens is you have a leak in the valve. This means fluid is starting to go backwards inside the heart. What happens is the atrial pressures will start to build. The chambers inside the heart uh, have pressure elevations in their filling pressures. This causes the pressures in the entire heart to start to back up. So the pressures in the ventricle, the bottom chambers get increased. Pressures in the atrium get increased. That eventually will spill over and the pressure gets transmitted backwards through the pulmonary veins back into the lungs. When the capillary beds get this high pressure, the fluid component of your blood will actually leak out and then just kind of sit in the tissues. That makes it very hard to exchange gases, exchange air. Um, patients with this generally, if it's a dog uh, or potentially a horse, will cough. Um, all animals and humans as well will show difficulty breathing. Um, sometimes we'll see cyanosis, which is a dark and, and bluish purplish discoloration of the gums and the mucous membranes. It is a life-threatening situation, but the good news is it's highly treatable. It requires the use of multiple medications and oftentimes oxygen therapy as well. So, so the patients may be in hospital for generally 24 to 48 hours in most standard cases. And we're going to give some medications called diuretics that help drain the fluid out of the body and reestablish the equilibrium. Right-sided congestive heart failure is the fluid accumulation either in the belly inside the chest, so around the lungs, or potentially uh, inside the sac around the heart. But we're going to come back to that in a future video because that's a really specific uh, scenario. I'll talk about the uh, abdominal effusion as our kind of go-to for this, but this is going to be fluid building up inside the belly. What happens is right heart pressure start to increase, so your right ventricle and right atrium. As the pressure goes up, it's transmitted to your cranial and especially caudal vena cava. Once the pressure in the vena cava gets increased, that increases the pressure inside your liver and that will eventually make all of the organs in your belly start to swell up, get a little bit of dimitus, have some fluid kind of there, and then as the pressure continues to rise, you actually have fluid start leaking out of those and actually filling the belly. So that's certainly not fun. The good news is prognosis is actually still quite good for most of those dogs uh, and cats and horses. The issue is why did it happen? For right-sided patients, they actually can go into severe distress, meaning they can have trouble breathing simply because the, the fluid is so taut in the abdomen. It's caused the belly to get so tight, the diaphragm itself can't move and they can end up having a lot of tr difficulty breathing. In that situation, the first thing that we do is called an abdominocentesis or a belly tap. That's where we actually put a small needle in, we're actually draining fluid out of the belly, which relieves that pressure against the diaphragm and lets the animals breathe better. 
those patients almost always also get treated with diuretics as well. So we're gonna give some medications to actually help drain fluid out of the body. For dogs with chronic valve disease causing left-sided congestive heart failure, typical life expectancy for these dogs from the onset of failure is still about one year, which is still great, great time for this. For dogs with right-sided congestive heart failure, it's harder to predict how long they're going to live. Generally, dogs with right-sided congestive heart failure don't, don't just fall over dead. It's more a quality of life issue. With all that fluid building up, they have to get repeated taps, adjustments to medications. Uh, many times it becomes a quality of life issue where they start to lose a lot of weight and they're not doing clinically well. Um, and unfortunately, the, the families elect that they're gonna, gonna let them go at that time, which is tough. Something that's really important about understanding the modalities that we use, the different testing that we do, is that chest x-rays, basically every veterinarian has access to those in their practice. Chest x-rays are so important because they allow us to look at the pulmonary parenchyma, so the tissue, the lung tissue. It allows us to look at the pulmonary vasculature as well as the cardiac silhouette and determine has fluid built up either around the lungs or inside the lungs. We can initiate therapy with just that. We don't have a definitive diagnosis, so we don't know exactly why this syndrome, this congestive heart failure happened, but we do know that it's present and can treat accordingly. Once the animals are stabilized, we then can do the echocardiogram or the ultrasound to look inside and say, okay, here's why it went wrong and here's how we can go about fixing this and, and or treating it at least, if not actually a cure. For any dog, cat, horse, any animal that is in congestive heart failure that's had fluid building up in them, it is so, so important that we recheck those laboratory studies at that time. We've got to know that the kidneys are happy, that they're content. We've got to understand that the electrolytes are normal. The reason that's so critical is if the kidneys are, are not working well, if the electrolytes are off, the medications that we use to treat this disease is going to make that problem worse. So we have to keep it all in balance and understand how to keep things safe and happy to the best of our ability. And then we want to recheck it generally about one to two weeks after we're starting therapy we recheck it to see where we are and then about every three to six months thereafter depending on the actual disease process we can then look at what is the recheck via echocardiography so when are we going to recheck the heart see how things are going there and then we just have to monitor them and see how they're how they're going to fare for the long term so i hope that answers some questions about what is congestive heart failure understanding that congestive heart failure is the syndrome of fluid accumulation, then we know there is some disease process present that has led to the actual fluid building up in the body. That is the cardiac disease that we then need to diagnose so that we can optimize our care. As always, I wanna thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free, like, subscribe, share this video. I uh, do wanna see your comments down below. I wanna make sure that we can build this channel, get you the information that you need, and make sure that your animals can get the best care possible. If you have any questions, your trusted veterinarian certainly will know a cardiologist that they can work with. Uh, otherwise, if you're in the Seattle region, we'd love to see you. Hope you have a wonderful day. And again, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.